Hello, my name is Jeremy, just your average everyday guy. That is until sometime in my early 30s, I developed a spinal condition known as ankylosing spondylitis. It took me from this, six foot tall, to this, not six foot tall. But I wasn't going to let that get me down forever. So eventually, I kicked some bad habits and started fighting back. I still get some pretty strange looks, but I'm now doing what I love, traveling and adventuring. My goal is to show other people with disabilities or anyone facing challenges that your best days don't have to be behind you and that there's always hope. So thanks for joining me, The Handicapped Hiker. On the last episode, I wrapped up six action-packed days with the family in Glacier National Park. After dropping off my niece and nephew at the airport, I began making my way south. I spent the night in West Yellowstone before another long day of driving. What a cool little town. I would have thought I'd just pass through Yellowstone without making a single stop, but this is my fifth time here, and I was just here the week before last. Besides that, I'm trying to get to Jenny Lake in Grand Teton before the crowds get out of hand. Grand Teton National Park is only 10 miles south of Yellowstone and was originally established in 1929. I say originally because at first it only protected the major peaks of the Teton mountain range itself. But out of concern for more dams being built on the Snake River and the over-commercialization of the valley known as Jackson Hole, Yellowstone Superintendent Horace Albright convinced John D. Rockefeller Jr to start buying up land in the area in hopes of adding it to Grand Teton National Park. There was strong local and congressional opposition to this plan, so after several years of nothing happening, Rockefeller threatened to start selling off his land. This lit a fire under President Roosevelt, Frank, not Ted. So he went around Congress and used the Antiquities Act to create Jackson Hole National Monument. 1943. Seven years later, in 1950, the National Monument was abolished and added to Grand Teton National Park. Today, Grand Teton is connected to Yellowstone both symbolically and literally by the John D. Rockefeller Jr. Memorial Parkway. Thank you. 
I'm here today to hike up to Inspiration Point. This trail is six miles total out and back with 870 feet of elevation gain. This is one of the most popular hikes in the park, and in my case, long overdue. Grand Teton often gets overlooked in favor of neighboring Yellowstone, and I admit I've done it myself. You might recall a few weeks ago, on my way to Yellowstone, I wanted to do this hike, but couldn't find parking anywhere near the area. Tetons are the youngest range in the Rockies, and what makes them stand out, literally, from other ranges, is the lack of foothills. They rise straight out of the valley floor, making them much more pronounced and in your face. And there's about a dozen glaciers remaining from the last little ice age. These mountains were named after a nickname given by French fur trappers, who called them the Trois Tetons, which means the three, uh, Tetons. To keep things PG-13, you can use your imagination or Google it. French people, right? Mines are always in the gutter. wonder if I'm French at all. Anyway, the tallest peak was named Grand Teton, and that's how the park got its name, Grand Teton, meaning the big mm, Teton. Let's move on. This was a good hike and a good view from Inspiration Point, but I had an encounter with some snobby tourists, a father and son duo who no doubtedly took the easy boat ride over here, who thought it would be good bonding time to make fun of the guy with the spinal condition. They weren't trying to hide it at all and got a real kick out of upsetting me. Some people, where's that goat from Glacier National Park when you need him?
There's plenty more to do and see here in Grand Teton, but daylight is burning and it's time to move along. Now, I have not seen all of the states yet, but when people ask me what's my favorite state so far, I tell them, hands down, Utah. Aside from the urban sprawl of the Salt Lake City area, the entire rest of the state is like driving through a postcard. The whole state practically could be a national park. In fact, there are five national parks in Utah, known as the Mighty Five and I'll soon be visiting three of them on this trip. Oh, this car could really use a shower. I'm ready for you, Rain. Bring it. Just while I'm driving, though, not while I'm camping. Another day, another KOA. After a great night's stay at the Richfield KOA, I'm on my way to Capitol Reef National Park. But first, let's find out why I'm being lit up by the local police. Oh, 
Oh. Yeah, I just realized it was, I was open. Gonna say, I'm hoping it's uh, <laughs> not on purpose. <laughs> no, I just left the campground. Yeah, okay, I didn't want you to lose anything. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll shut it for you, all right? Oh, okay, thank you. Have a good one, sir. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I left the campground with my back hatch up. I bet that wouldn't have happened if I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. I'm kidding. I love KOA. I'm just an idiot sometimes when I've got too much on my mind. Capitol Reef National Park, established in 1971, was originally made a national monument in 1937, but the remote area wasn't accessible to the public until 1950. It's named after the white dome formations of Navajo sandstone, as someone apparently thought resembled the dome of the Capitol building. And reef was a term given to any rocky barrier that presented an obstacle to travel similar to an ocean reef. I know, it's not as cool as the meaning behind Grand Teton, but hey, they can't all be winners. Let's start things off with the Hickman Bridge Trail. This trail is 1.7 miles total out and back with 416 feet of elevation gain. It has some moderately rocky terrain and travels under Hickman Natural Bridge, which is similar to an arch. The main difference being that a natural bridge spans a valley or canyon, whereas an arch is a formation above flattish ground.
That was a good mid-level trail. Now let's keep exploring. I was planning on doing the Grand Wash Trail next, but honestly, I'm feeling pretty worn out and not my usual energetic self. I think at this point, I'll just do the easy accessible walkway at the Petroglyphs and then take the two mile scenic drive into Capitol Gorge. All of these orchards were planted by Mormon settlers in the late 1800s. Today they're maintained by the Park Service and allow you to pick your own fruit for a reasonable price, of course. Now that is a tree. That thing's got to be eight or nine feet in diameter. Wow. Look at these monsters. was a good quick visit to Capitol Reef. Now let's make our way to Scenic Byway 12 through Dixie National Forest and Grand Staircase Escalant National Monument. Here I am arriving at my home for the next two nights, Bryce Canyon National Park, which isn't technically really a canyon, but what's in a name? There's still plenty of adventure to come on this trip, including another top 10 hike. So be sure to tune in for the next episode, and we'll see you then.